I beg of you, dear friends, if you've not yet experienced the full events of Ragnarok, spoilers are coming. The Vanaheim is a very large realm, but it was the most ambitious realm I think the studio has ever tackled. We wanted to do so much, and we did so much, and somehow we pulled it off. Hi, my name is Aaron Contreras, and I am a senior environment artist at Santa Monica Studio. My name is Lena. My role on the game is a 3D environment artist. My name is Jeremy War, and I'm a senior staff level designer. My name is Elizabeth Bright, and I'm a level designer at Santa Monica Studio. Hi, my name is Christopher Lloyd, and I'm the lead visual effects artist. My name is Carol Williams. I am the level design producer on God of War Ragnarok. As a level design producer, I help create the world that you see in the games. We work very closely with the environment artists, VFX artists, lighters, to really bring the world together. My role as a level designer, I get to create a lot of the really interesting and different gameplay spaces that the player gets to play through. Level designer will create the map already with some very simple environment. Our job is to make it pretty and make it real. So my role as a visual effects artist, if you made a cake, we would be the frosting. So we add the art on top of other art. For example, Kratos' blades, we do the fire on them. If there's weather, snow, magic, that's all visual effects. Wow, it's beautiful and uh, what? It is also dangerous. We didn't really see much of Anaheim in the, the previous game other than that little window in Freya's house. So what we did was we took that little window and we just really expanded that and we're like, we almost kind of turned that into like multiple different biomes all within one realm. You know, you've got the jungles, you've got the savannas, you've got these ruins, you've got caves, you've got kind of like swampy areas and they all kind of retain a little bit of that palette from that original window. We pull a lot from Norse mythology as we're creating the different realms, but we've also added our own unique twists and inspiration to each of the realms, so the player is surprised each time they play through with the added layer of Fimble Winter and the upcoming war to add tension and build interest as the player plays through these different sections. Vanaheim had very little kind of actual written mythology. But in our own kind of story, we've implemented the story of Skull and Hadi and kind of the idea of the moon and the sun and other characters such as Freyr. Those were some physical mythological elements that we could use to put into the environment to really help tell the player and anyone that's kind of paying attention, like, okay, this is Vanaheim. Pretty much it originated from the concept art and the storyboards that the artists created in terms of coming up with unique visions for what a Vanaheim jungle could look like. So pieces showing sort of the thick jungle, the, the canopy. From those sort of visual cues, we basically lay out the player's journey through Vanaheim as it adheres to the, the narrative direction. Vanaheim is extremely different than all the other realms that we visit. The grotto specifically, or the crater, where we actually get to see that world. Fate only binds you if you let it do what is necessary, not because it is written. Vanaheim is very unique. Typically, a level would have like one main state where that state sort of determines the look and how things behave. For Vanaheim, the realm features a time of day cycle. So what that means is that all areas of the level, except for a small few, every area has two different states that are fully functional and determine you know, their behavior. Implementing the day-night cycle kind of meant like, okay, what can we do with the plants? Can we make plants uh, animate or can we have a scene where you're, you're there during the daytime, then you come back later and it's drastically different? 
we have to make effects for the daytime and the nighttime. So that way they read on both levels. So in the daytime, it's a lot more subtle, but everything still reads well and feels natural. But at night, we want, you know, effects to kind of glow. You'll notice some plants will start having some nighttime glowing feel. There are certain foliage or plant life that would be active. Different wildlife could be active. Enemies that the player may fight are tied to the time of day. And the way that Vanaheim is set up, the level can transition from one state to the other at a moment's notice. And that's particularly important once the player gets control of the time of day uh, later on in the game, where they can pretty much change it at their discretion. It was a very challenging under the hood to get all these parts to work correctly. Yeah, it was a very satisfying uh, challenge to accomplish. I don't know if you've ever been in a jungle before, but it gets pretty disorienting. So, you know, whether it be day or night, um, you'll just get lost. And that's something that we've had to figure out how to help players get the direction they need. And again, adding the layer of the day versus night made it even extra challenging. My priority, other than to make things beautiful and realistic, I also focus on how to make plays memorable so it's not feel generic or repetitive or for player to get lost easily. I would, let's say, put a very weird shaped rock on the side of the road, and also when player passes by, um, they will be like, ah, oh, I remember that rock. Or um, put a like, massive root that comes out from the ground, and that will have some impact to player. What we can do to help the player is kind of guide them through kind of environmental storytelling. We're also thinking about what, what other kind of elements can we put in there that kind of remind the player of the story or of things that have happened or maybe are foreshadowing things that are going to happen? If there's an enemy coming up that you've never encountered before, maybe there's some bones or some footprints on the ground or scratch marks, something to kind of indicate, you know, something's coming that you weren't expecting. Our environment team is amazing, so we just get to sprinkle in effects everywhere, and especially for Vanaheim, where it's such a new and jungly place, you get to really put in cool little insects and different type of things in the air, and I think the team really did well at bringing that to life. Just in general, Vanaheim is just one of those realms that people haven't seen yet, so I'm just kind of excited for people to go through there for the first time and, and just explore, because there's a lot in Vanaheim. We're here. You live in a tree? Not in it. Below it. Heavily! Look! Having worked on the previous God of War game, on Freya's house and the, the forest and kind of the surrounding areas, I did spend a lot of time getting to know Freya's character. And on this game, I did get to spend a lot of time with her there as well. So seeing her evolve from this character who is this humble, kind of secretive uh, witch just living in the forest uh, very peacefully and then has her life kind of disrupted. You must be better than this. Oh. In the last moments of God of War 2018, what Kratos had done to Freya by killing her son. He saved your life! He robbed me of everything! We left off seeing Freya very angry and bitter towards Kratos, wanting revenge. Everything. We are discovering Vanaheim along with Freya because she hasn't been back to the realm in a long time. My village, I hardly recognize it. I used to play hide and seek with Freya in the crops. At harvest time, we'd dance and feast until the sun rose. Why did I have to come back here and be reminded of all this? We want to show sort of the decline that the realm has suffered in her absence, you know, sort of the heartbreak that she would feel when she revisits areas that were once vibrant, that have now succumbed to Odin's forces and their occupation of Anaheim. You are not the one who needs to die. You know, just in the environment art alone, you can see this realm used to be something much greater. 
Freya used to be someone much greater. She used to be a queen, but that's all but forgotten now. All you see are these strewn bits of uh, stone and metal and everything just intertwined with the, the jungle environment. We want to sort of visually tell that, that story and sort of communicate that, that kind of pain that maybe she would feel uh, on discovering, you know, uh, the destruction. But I think there's also a bit of like a redemption as well in terms of her finally coming back and trying to reclaim what was once under her rule and then sort of showing some hope for the future in terms of her starting to mount a resistance against Odin. Oh, On your right! Just seeing everything put together, seeing what environments did with all the creatures and the animals and the plant life. My proudest moment with uh, our game is just seeing all of it from start to finish coming to life. The people that worked so hard on it, they really worked hard to pull that world together and it really shows in how fun it is, even how beautiful it is. Seeing what it became is really amazing to me. When designing a new realm, we definitely take player expectations into consideration as we want to still surprise and delight the player by creating a new space that they have not seen before, but also still maintaining the high standard of quality that we've provided to them in previous realms. It feels good to see, once everything is put together, how much impact it really has. The last time I played it, it's fantastic, and I think people will really enjoy it.